Welcome to the third lesson of design of reinforced concrete. Due to some unavoidable circumstances, Robsar will not be able to deliver the lecture of this week. Instead of Robsar, I will be delivering the lecture of this week. I am Hasibul Hassan, lecturer of Civil Engineering Department. This week we will learn about the design of reinforced concrete beam. First we will learn some basics of beam design. Then we will see some examples. As this is a large topic, it will continue over some weeks. So lecture is divided into several parts. If you don't understand some topics, Please use the discussion forum. I will try to explain those topics in coming weeks. Before we start beam design theories, let's talk about design in general. What I understand by the design is that resistance should be greater than the action. Look at the picture on the right side. A person is trying to hold a ball on a slope. If we consider the ball as a action and the person as a resistance, if the person is not stronger, then he cannot resist the, resist the ball from falling down the slope. So we can say, if the resistance is larger than the action, then the structure will be stable. Now that you have the general idea of the actions and resistance, we will see from the point of view of a structure. In general, there are three kinds of actions, axial force, shear force and bending moment. We see you are learning to calculate in structural analysis courses courses action varies from member to member for example in beam there is not much axial force so we ignore the axial forces in beam so beam is designed for the shear force and bend moments only on the other hand columns are designed for the axial force mainly Sometimes there is bending moment as well. In this course, we will not cover the design of column, so we will discuss everything from the point of view of a beam. In any structural elements, resistance comes from the material itself. So we have to ensure the strength and the ductility of that material is sufficient to resist the actions. Here I generalize the concept of ultimate strength design method or USD method. Robser has already discussed about the USD method in previous lecture. I will not describe it here again. I want you to remember this simple formula phi mn is equals to mu. In this formula phi is the capacity reduction factor. mn means nominal moment and mu means ultimate moment. Nominal moment is the capacity of the beam. In other words, it is the resistance. And nominal moment is calculated from the strength of the material and strain of the material. On, on the other hand, ultimate moment calculated from the loads on the beam. You usually call it as bending moment. What happens when a beam is loaded? In this slide, I have put together the generalized behavior of a reinforced concrete beam. 
so in the first picture here you can see if there is no load on the beam beam will be perfectly horizontal and look at this red line it is perfectly vertical now when we apply the load on the beam what happen it start to bend if we look at the red line it's rotated with, with the bending of the beam if we increase the load the rotation of that red line increased as well if we keep increasing the load beam will crack from the bottom fiber and ultimately it will fail let's zoom around around that red line here you can see that red line at one point it don't move at all because that point is on the neutral axis neutral axis is the axis where there is tension or compression force if the beam bend due to the positive bending moment on the top fiber of the beam it will be compressive stress and on the bottom fiber of the beam it will be tensile stress for the negative bending moment it will be opposite in the bottom fiber there will be compression and in the top fiber there will be tension if we go upward or downward from the neutral axis that red line move further from the vertical axis maximum stress and strain will occur at the surface of the beam which is usually known as top fiber and bottom fiber of the beam this behavior i explain which is based by assumption plane section remain plane we can simplify the diagram as this one now we can divide the behavior of beam in three stages first stage can be named as uncracked face at this stage there is not much load on the beam so the stress occur in the bottom and top fiber is not very high in the bottom fiber the stress is less than the tensile strength of the concrete in the second stage the bending moment applied on the beam is higher than the crack moment the tensile force in the bottom fiber of the beam is higher than the tensile strength of the concrete so concrete cracked and the tensile force carried by the steel if we keep increasing the load the load beam will ultimately fail this failure can occur in three different way one is tensile failure one is compressive failure and one e can be named as balanced failure here in this picture you can see beam crack from the bottom fiber so this failure is the tensile failure and tensile failure occur due to the lack of reinforcement it's known as under reinforced beam here you can see the concrete on the top of the beam crashed this is due to the over reinforcement we don't want this kind of failure of the beam this kind of failure is brittle failure brittle failure is not preferable because you will not get a earning before the beam fail balanced failure is preferable because it will utilize the strength of steel and concrete now let's see the stress distribution during these three different failure 
During tension failure, the stress on the steel is higher than the strength of the steel. And compressive stress on the top fiber is less than the ultimate strength of the concrete. In compression failure mode, stress in the steel is less than the yield strength of the steel. And the stress on top fiber is higher than the compressive strength of the concrete. In balanced failure mode, we have to ensure the stress in the steel must be higher than the yield strength of the steel. Stress on the top fiber must be higher than the compressive strength of the concrete. In this slide, we will discuss about the stress distribution and strain distribution in a reinforced concrete section. This is a typical reinforced concrete beam section. We need to know this parameter before we go further. Depth of the beam is denoted by H. B is the width of the beam. C is the depth of the neutral axis from the top fiber. And D is the effective depth of the beam. We have discussed earlier for positive bending moment there is tensile stress below the neutral axis and compressive stress above the neutral axis. To determine the compressive portion of the beam we have to calculate the depth of the neutral axis. We can determine the neutral axis location from the strain diagram. Under the assumption of plane section remain plane we will always have a linear strain diagram by using similar triangle method we can determine the depth of the neutral axis from that diagram compressive stress strain curve of the concrete is non-linear we need to calculate the total compressive force on the beam to calculate the capacity of the beam to calculate the total compressive force we have to calculate the area under the nonlinear curve which is difficult for the practical purpose for this region researcher has created a more simplified shape which is a rectangular shape of the stress strain diagram it will give the same value as the nonlinear curve and retain the behavior of the reinforced concrete beam we shall use this simplified diagram of stress strain curve for the concrete to determine the design formula of the beam. By using the rectangular stress block diagram, it is easy to calculate the compressive force on the beam. As shown on the figure, a is the depth of the rectangular stress block diagram and gamma into a prime c is the width of the rectangular stress block diagram so we can calculate the area of the stress block diagram by multiplying this height and width of the regular stress block diagram this area is the compressive force of the beam now we have to calculate the tensile force of the beam it is easy to calculate let's assume that total area of the reinforcement of the beam is, is s and stress in the reinforcement is fs 
then by multiplying as with the fs we can get the tensile force to maintain the equilibrium in the beam compressive passive force must be equal to tensile force so t is equals to c now we can uh, input the value of t and c in the equation we will get as fs is equals to gamma into f prime c into ab as we need to calculate the balance steel ratio we have to substitute the steel area by the steel ratio which we can write as rho rho is equals to as by bd so we can write as is equals to rho into bd we can also substitute the value of gamma from the table shown in a previous slide. In balanced failure mode, I have said that stress in the steel must be larger or equal to the yield strength of the steel. If we replace the stress in the steel by yield strength of the steel steel ratio of the beam will be balanced steel ratio there is another relation shown on the figure c is equals to a by beta 1 from there i we can write a is equals to beta 1 into c we have calculated the depth of the neutral axis in previous so we can insert the value of neutral axis in this equation and we will get the equation as rho b is equals to 0.85 beta 1 f prime c by f y epsilon u divided by epsilon u plus epsilon s again in balanced failure mode we have to consider the strain value in steel is 0 0.005 and its ultimate strain in concrete is 0 0.003 so, so we can put this value in the equation and we will get the final balanced steel ratio equation if you need the further explanation or step by step calculation of this value let me know in discussion forum if you don't understand any of this topic in this lesson let me know i will explain in the next lecture i will show a numerical example of how to calculate the balanced steel ratio and some of the practical aspects of the reinforced concrete beam which is considered during design process thank you for being with me and see you in the next class